Great. The sun down. must be moldy. It was moldy. moldy yesterday. That Kiwanis field, I was helping a baseball and I was catching the sun. How you doing? All right. Yes. I don't know what we said. I'll let you know. I have a metal detector. I said, well, as soon as I get home from school, I'll grab the metal detector and I'll find it. See what I can do when I went down to the valley. I don't know what yeah, like Try to get this one put in outside. Are you still sick? Yeah, I'm going to go to the hospital after we've done it with me. We need to go. Oh, okay. All right. Is it's the hospital. Fire department first. Are you tired too? <laughs> what? Are you tired too? Somebody is out. Are you tired? I'm tired. 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 i am tired i am tired i Chief, this is Mr. Reinhardt's memo. He can't join us today. Okay, yeah, I see that. You saw that already? Okay, okay yes. everybody saw it. Yes. 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 That picture's in the other truck. Oh, uh, that's in the factory? Yeah. yeah. Or is it at your... No, it's at the factory. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, so it printed out. Kathy printed it. It came out really well. Oh, you get it demographic in a minute. Too little. Makes it work. You're running as a slave. You still got by the You can have No, no we need it in the No, no, in fact, it, uh, it. this one's just the, uh, I It'll be done around the 15th. Do right right right. 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 I'll call this meeting of the Budget and Finance Committee to order at 3.45. Um, gentlemen, why I ask you to be here today is that right now we're, we're, the preliminary budget shows a deficit of $171,000. Now, we do not have any idea if that will be the final deficit. We don't know what that will be, but somehow we're going to have to come up with ways to close that hole. Um, Mr. Reinhardt will, for the record, is unable to join us today, but he sent some information here in a memo that hopefully you can see it printed out really small but um he just took the percentage of the budget that each of your department has i believe of the expense i guess of the expenses and i'm not sure where he came up with this because the numbers don't they don't total to what i believe they should but then he gave you that percentage of the he went with 191,000 for some reason, but he gave, he attributed a percentage of that just to each of your departments. Just so you're aware that's what he did. It's not reflective of anyone else on this committee or where we're at or what we need to do. So, so if, if, you're, if, if the one department's percentage in the budget was 25%, he reduced that budget by 25%? He, no, he gave an expense to be lowered of that percentage. So Public yeah, Works, he said, you're, you, he said you're 23%. How did he come, I'm asking how that memo, how did we come up with that? I would assume he went to the budget, said here's what it is, you have 23% of the budget, and... So he lowered that budget by 23%. No, it's just, no, he just suggested that you'll have to... Yeah, you need to find that. He's oh, saying, I see what you're saying. He's saying... Well, he applied that 23% to the new budget. To the, to the total. To the total. Okay. To the to he, he came up with a total of saying we're going to be $191,000 short in the budget. So he said, Jeff, you're going to have to come up with 46000 because you're 23%. Okay. And then he worked it that way. It's not reflective of anything other than that, what he did. Um, our first, the first thing we wanted to do was at least get you, get the department heads together and say, here's where we're short right now. We don't know if what will be short in the long run, but we want you to be aware and we want you to possibly identify cuts, if there are cuts that can be made and what you think you can do to help us. I don't want to do it the way it's been done in the past and say we're going to cut this and we're going to cut this and we're going to cut this with no discussion from you guys. I think it's the wrong way to do it. I think it's a, it sends a bad message to everyone. I think your employees then say, council's just going to cut this stuff and not even talk to any of us, and we have no idea, and we don't want to do that. And it may be much more prudent for you to go back to your employees and say, we're short this year, what do you think? You know, and I don't, I don't know how you as department heads, what your philosophy is of it, but I don't want to steal your philosophy and use my, use my philosophy as well. This department's more important to me, so I'm going to cut from this one. I don't think it's the right way to do it. I simply think personally, and I don't know how the rest of the department heads feel, but I think, for me, I think the right decision is what we all want to have to start off with, whatever that is. 
I think the reason for having the discussion with the department heads is so that everybody is thoroughly informed about the impact of your decision. Simply that alone. Not whether this person agrees or that person agrees, but having the right amount of information so that the council member can make a, a, an informed decision about what they decide to do. I don't want to be offensive in any way. I don't want to shortchange someone, and I don't want to cut something that somebody really needs that I'm not aware is that important. I'm not doing your job day to day. So for me to say I need to cut 40000 out of yours and just cut something that to you is like, oh my gosh, I would have much rather given up something else than this, I think it's much better to have this discussion. Okay. So, go ahead, Mr. Yeah. For the background, just so you know, the, the very, very preliminary budget I prepared, any accompaniment of random all right, so from that, I don't know if you guys have anything you want to tell us today, if there's anything specific we can go through today. I just wanted to make you aware, Mr. Neely, we're still hope we're probably still we're at this point we're looking at 170,000 deficit in general fund. Well, nothing has changed since I drafted that. Um, we have the meeting next Tuesday, September. So we're just sitting right now. We're, we're and I just want to caution. I mean, we keep throwing the number 170, 170, 170. That is not the number. Correct. I mean, that is what we show there. But there is no doubt whatsoever that there are significant figures in that budget that we don't know yet. And so, you know, as we go through, I think what we need to do is kind of what Jeff's saying is, you know, we want to start identifying areas that can be worked on. That's good. But if it's a matter of saying, okay, now we're going to take you know, 40,000 here, 30,000 here, 25 there, for the goal of getting to 170, well, you know what? That, number one, it may not be, first of all, it's not going to be accurate because the number four right. right there just shots in the Correct. Back. Because we have no other way to do it. So um, I just want to caution that. That, that number keeps being thrown out, and it's not thrown out in any way as an accurate number. Very good. It's just there because that's what the result is when you try and get something done, you know, jump on it early enough that we have enough time to talk more, I think, about philosophy and policy than, than about the actual number. And we expect that number to be less, not greater. I cannot say that. I expect that number. I expect that number to be less, not greater. Well, one of the, one of the, nice. yeah, one of the <laughs> dangers of, of it's a projection. Right. My department, I don't have any potential projections other than if we average 10 calls last year, we got 10 calls this year. We might have eight calls next year, or we might have 12. So, you know, I, I, we start, I start the process back in April looking at numbers to see where we're falling in. Uh, you know, I think that arbitrarily saying, you know, we're going to cut everything by 10%, you can cut it, but when you come down to the end of next year, you still have that expense. Correct. You know, so we have to find ways like you said, and, and involve us in, in the company's process. Um, I looked at my department, what I could do. There's not much left in there to do anything with. We've talked about raising the subscription rate by $5. You get about 1,800 subscriptions, five bucks, that's about 7,000 additional revenue. The risk of doing, raising that, people are going to say, well, I can't, I'm not going to pay the extra five bucks, so I'm not going to subscribe. So now instead of gaining five dollars, you've lost 45. You know, so it's kind of, a, it's a, you know, it's a bit of a gamble. Our subscription rates are uh, probably the most reasonable or along the lines with everyone else's in the area. So we're not out of them, we're not over. So that, that's one area that might raise seven. Obviously, the thing we would like to try to do is we mail 7,000 subscriptions out and we get 1,800 back. And that's pretty much the standard, a 25% return. How do we encourage the folks to subscribe and take that number from 1,800 to 2,500? You know, that's $28,000 instead of, you know, it just you know, doesn't 
and we haven't been able to figure it out as to why. You know, black folks aren't you know, surviving in you know, some greater percentage of the world. You know, so that's, that's one potential. The other thing, at this point, we're ready to have the stuff printed. So I need to make a decision to come them up or stay the same in order to get them out you know, by the end of October so that they're out timing and they're not falling back into the you know, more falling into the next Now, is there a possibility of printing more? When you're saying you have to make a decision about printing. Well, I have to... Oh, you have to make it about the fee. fee. I see. Yeah. I see. I'm sorry. I mean, they can print the back page, but they still have to... Sure. No, I understand what you're saying. I thought you really print more. No, I mean, we, just put we, print, we get 8,000 printed up and we send probably 7,500 out. And we keep 500 for handouts in places and you know, whatever. But, you know, if we could increase the percent of return, it would be... It would help. Well, what would uh, yeah, we were the lowest in the area. Yeah, some folks have a 35 for a single senior citizen, 40 for couples, 50 for families, 3 plus, you know, the business rates. We have nine businesses that subscribe at $100. And that basically covers them if we go in uh, during business hours. Right. We, you know, just to recover them. So there's only, there's nine businesses that do that. Um, there's 634 single subscriptions. And there's 1,109 families. And that's as of you know, today. Well, that was last year's count. And we don't actually go January to December because it's not full. So that's about a square amount of people. And the same number is 35. 35. A lot of the things that are in the budget are not in my department. They're not my department. Uh, and the ones that are in my department are, uh, it's almost kind of like a Murphy's Law thing. As soon as you cut a number down, you end up having some sort of an unforeseen condition that comes up and you end up uh, going over uh, you get some hard weather or something like that. Uh, I know that, you know, what I see the problem being is that the girl is not Mr. Brennan on top. We talk together as staff uh, members. Um, the girl does not have a young other than that. And, and that, that really is the, the truth in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and and what I'm fearful of. Get off the phone, boy. What I'm fearful of is that you know, we're, 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 we do this every year. You're great. You're great. Do this every year. And we brought Peter to pay Paul to make the money back because no one wants to raise taxes. Right. And in as much as there might be some expenses that maybe aren't 100% necessary, um, it's a hard thing to keep the whole boat floating and making contributions and supporting different things and trying to figure out what makes sense and what doesn't. But one thing I have noticed is that the services that we provide, uh, and I'll just use an example, you know, I, I was speaking at an event uh, in the park last summer. It was a governmental function that was meant to showcase an improvement to our stream that we had done. But to use a pavilion at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday, at 8 o'clock on a Wednesday morning, and the council would not waive that fee. But yeah, we drive 20 tables and, and, and barrels and barricades over to Lincoln School and we'll charge the dime. St. Anne's takes all our picnic tables and uses them and we don't charge the dime. We put up banners up and down until the cows come home and we charge them party next to nothing, so I'm not, nothing at all. Um, I don't know what the answer is, and all those things are just a drop in the bucket of what right. we need to do. But right. They don't solve the greater picture, but you're right. They take manpower, they take time, and they take away from other things. Um, what I'm fearful of is, you know, we need to we need to be cautious about what we do here because um, we obviously want to. to fund what needs to be funded, and I think there lies what council needs to arrive at what, 
in my opinion, because of my department, I, I have an idea of what I think the basic services are. You know, Mike's got a different twist on it. Jim does too, because we're looking at things from a different side of the fishbowl. Um, but I think that it's clear uh, it's swimming pool. Is that, is that a necessary function? All the baseball fields and all the infield mitts that we purchase and all the stuff that we do, is that a necessary purchase? Is the library being open seven days a week or five days a week, is that, is that necessary? Um, do we do the Halloween parade? Uh, I don't know. Uh, one thing that I thought might be a savings, and I, I'll only mention this, I don't, I'm not an advocate of this, compost. We have extra hours on Wednesday evening. There's four hours of overtime that we can cut out if we close that gate at 4 o'clock. Uh, that would save the borough about $6,000 in overtime. We could also shift, shift the work to a, a straight pay schedule on a Saturday. Instead of it being an overtime on Saturday, we could, we could, we could do a shift differential so that you know, one guy doesn't work on Friday or doesn't work on Monday because he worked at Compost on a Saturday and now he's working straight time. So you might save another four or $5,000 there. The problem with that is, and this is what I don't advocate. Work compost is a really huge function by the people in the community. They are loading up there continuously on a Wednesday night. I'm afraid that if you shift that, they're going to be overloaded on a Saturday, number one. Well, what happens if the guys decide to call in sick on a Saturday morning? And now you've got to scramble to get someone to cover that. It, it, it seems to only work with a predetermined schedule. So I'm fearful of doing that. Um, I don't know of anything else in my department that we could cut. Um, we don't. Not at all. Well, we have in the past, um, but no, we don't. The only overtime will work is um, like last night. We had to. We, we need to have five guys finish something for an hour versus remobilizing and screwing up the whole half a day today. Uh, we've really cut the majority of the overtime out. Um, I will tell you that the costs for running that swimming pool are not accurately depicted in that budget because if you look at the lifeguard wages, the chemicals, all of that, all of the wages to set that pool up and put it to bed every year come out of public work wage accounts. So, you know, we spend hours down there that aren't necessarily tabulated. So when you say we spend $100,000, we probably spend quite a bit more than that. Uh, I'm not suggesting that's something we should close, but, you know, I think that all, what I want to say here is that one of the first approaches I had was um, freeze wages and get rid of employees. And I'll say for the record, my job is not all that money. I, I do the job because I love my job. I think that not once has it ever started with, let's really assess what services are necessary and what's really appropriate. And that's why I'm saying, Brian, to you, all of council, not just budget and finance, we should sit down and we should sit around a table and just bat it back and forth. And we should, everybody should be, in, in, should be educated so that they thoroughly understand and not just because they got some idea that we could throw a dart at the wall and say we're going to lower your budget 23 percent because it doesn't make sense. I'm concerned about that because in the middle of the night I don't have guys to show up to plow and there's no long chance for good what decisions that were made and someone's going to be the scapegoat. I mean stop and think about it. I'm not trying to print paint gloom and doom but you know this weather pattern continues we're in for it. What do we do when the guy's got to plow 30 or 40 hours straight? We have no way of, we don't have enough guys. So is it is. You know, we have 18 guys. Take away two mechanics, take away three water guys, take away part guys. You're down to about 12 guys. Now they've got vacations, they've got sick, they've got, you know, all kinds of variables come into it. I don't know what the answer is. I think that for the last three or four years, we have cut ourselves down to bare bones. And 
And I'm not saying we can't continue to do that because I want to be a team player too. I'm just, I'm really concerned that. Well, are, are you going to be sitting at this table five years from now still trying to cut the bare bones when we've already done it? It's, it's the fear. I mean, that's the true fear. I mean, how long can you do it? That what we save today will be trying to make up next year because costs are just going up exponentially across the board. And so it, it is a problem that we must solve and not just keep cutting people or not do this or do that because I mean, all of those things that we do make the community. Making the right decisions is obviously important, but you know, turning off the light bulb isn't what we're looking for. Um, we're looking for some serious dollars. And uh, grant funds are dried up. Chief, I gave I believe you saw Mr. Reinhardt's memorandum. You see that one? I think you saw I think you saw it already. I think hopefully everybody saw it. Where he took where he took the total cut and I just handed it out to everyone. And the only other thing I said is, you know, we're just here not to identify cuts right now, not to figure out what they are, just to hear what you guys think and to determine where where possible cuts could exist if we get to that point. We don't know what the final number is. We don't know where we're at right now. So go ahead. My first question would be, is this a working document that you're working from? Or no, that's just something Mr. Reinhardt said. He couldn't, he couldn't be here today. So that's his input. That's the document. Email it. Yes. I guess my question is coming in late, and I apologize. This is an important staff. Um, is this something we're, we're talking about now? No, I just wanted to give that to everyone because Mr. Reinhardt can't be with us. <coughs> I'm looking at a number. Um, my next question is going to be, how did we get there? <laughs> I would one person can answer. That. Okay. Uh, I, I my my take on it is Mr. Reinhardt took the budget, okay. took what percentage each department had, multiplied it by what he saw as the hole in the budget. He came up with 191 thousand. I don't know where or why he has that number, and then attributed a percentage of that 191 thousand to each department. I don't know why or where. I don't know, but he couldn't be here today, and okay. I told him I would share with him. And, and I did this. see this, yes. And, okay. and actually, I did respond. I saw, I saw responses, and I just, I just wanted to make sure it was out there that everyone okay. had it because it was, it was okay. what Mr. Reinhardt provided me with. Not working in lieu of, no, no, no. Okay. It's just in lieu of him being here, I just wanted to provide it so everybody saw it. No, we're not working from anything right now. We're just discussing the issue at hand. And my hope is that if it comes down to us having to make cuts, and that's what we have to do, that instead of council saying, let's cut this and let's cut this. We're sitting with the budget and saying, well, this one looks a little high, let's get rid of this. That department heads are guiding us in those decisions instead of council members' personal opinions guiding those decisions. That's my hope. I think that's what I had asked for. I think it was just Jim and I that were here at the first workshop. But I think that's what I had appealed for in front of all the council members here, is that you know, it's easy to go for the throat of the employee first I guess it's the easiest target to say, let's cut staff. And my appeal was, before we do that, you know, wouldn't we want to discuss individually and collectively with our department heads that this is an alternative, but before we get to that, where else can we cut? And, and I think I shared with you some of my thoughts on the, on, on the police department side, but when I look at that, why are we going to move into filling positions and doing things that are extras when we're looking at targeting an existing position to cut it? Why would we strategically do that? I, that wouldn't be my recommendation. It's not going to be re my recommendation. I want to say for the record that if anybody heard that, please correct me. Um, it's been implied that I, that I recommended cutting uh, staff member and if I did that please please correct me and then, then I'm wrong but I'm advocating that we don't do that and that the first steps we take is to cut everything else out we possibly can first individually as a department and then collectively as a group and I think that makes sense because I think the department head should have a pulse on the day-to-day -day operations of what services we have to provide that are necessities 
And I'll harken back to, to my point was when a person picks up the phone and calls 911, do they want the police officer to show up at their door and their house is burning in the fire truck and the person falls down the steps in the ambulance and they can't get to work because the street's not flat. To me, and I may be different than others, I see those as necessities that we need to continue to provide to our people. So why would we go at the throats of those people first? Let's look at what extra things we're doing in this community that everyone knows and the employees see, and let's look at those. And are they needed, or are they things that we would like to continue to do? Because once we get to cutting the services and employees, that's what you're going to see. Once you reduce staff, you're going to have to cut somewhere doing something. And again, I can only speak for the law enforcement side. Anyone's paying attention to what we're seeing here, going on around us, there's no real hope for change in the immediate future. So do we really want to go after public safety first? Is that what the message we want to communicate to this community and the residents? I certainly don't. I pick up the phones and take the complaint from the people who say, this is going on at my neighbor's house. This is happening across the street. And we have to try to, to um, somehow service all of that. So my appeal is, before we get to those cuts of employees, and of course, you know, the word is out on the street, it's going to happen quick. Um, let's, uh, whatever we have to do, workshops, let's collectively make some decisions and come to us and say, this amount of money has to go, or the alternative is this. That's all I'm asking. I kind of agree with Dave, you know, in, in, in one side of it, and again, I'm saying, we're gonna go through this now, next year we're going through it again, because until we solve the problem of the money coming in, this isn't gonna change, because the costs are going up more than what we're bringing, kind of what we're bringing in, so this is, we've gotta figure out how to fix that, but, um, if you just looked at the budget and said, okay, the, the department budgets for adequately funding fire, ambulance, police, and public works, chopped off all the recreation, chopped off all the contributions to everybody, and looked at what's that budget, and then built back in what you think is the best. Because in reality, that is the extra. We don't need a baseball field to make it happen. It's nice. It's great. We don't need a pool. Um, I'm not advocating any of that, but I'm just simply saying, I think that's where we're at. We've got to look and see what are our basic services and build that back up from there. And I, I echo the same. I believe that for my folks, you know, the threat of layoffs, of eliminations, of Department eliminations, it's out there. You know, and people are saying, you know, where do we go? I have a department that like goes 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, with five full-time employees, and the rest are part-time. Three years ago, I gave two employees up. How much more can we give up? <coughs> you know, and the you know the, the fact of the matter is, of, you know, what do we do? And where do we cut? You know, we have overtime, we have part-time, we have full-time, we have benefits, we have medical supplies. It's all there, and it's, a, it's as basic as it's going to get. So how do we come up with a solution to not only stop it now, but in the future? Because we And it seems to me that I can hide every budget.
starting with a budget that had essentially no capital improvements in this new budget other than those that were funded by the bond issue, that was bare bones. Um, I really think to ask people to cut you know, at this point, you know, could you cut $500 off of office supply? Well, maybe based upon some performance. But when you're talking about $350,000, Third, over a third of a million dollars that is just tacked onto your cost from one year to the next. And you have limited revenue sources. Our, our quarterly budget summary report um, for September 2011, the revenues are very good. They are really where they are big. They are, they are meeting their projections for this year, and they're going to. But even with meeting our revenues, when you start adding in $350,000 from one year to the next of uncontrolled expense, what do you do? I think two things we got to look at as a team. One is, obviously, we talked about this at staff meetings, but keep kicking the can down the road. We got to look at our fees, what we're charging, and you know, started doing that today in the police department. Obviously, we're trying to recover when we're Doing someone the amount of money it's costing us to perform that service. But we're going to have to look at fees first. I think all the department heads here are trying.
trying to work within the system that we don't want to increase taxes for the citizens or for you folks. So we got to start with that. What, what are our fees? And then, if we can't make up the difference, we have to look at what areas of our individual budgets are necessities versus commodities. I think that's what we're talking about. It's, it's troubling to hear the initial response is we just have to cut staff. Well, with it comes cutting services, and who communicates that message to the people who are expecting it? And then what are our priorities then that we're talking about? What are the basic needs that we want to have if we're cutting? And what extras are we doing that are nice but are going to have to go because we're down to it now? Um, and I think we have to look at these across the board on every And is that going to make up all the difference? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But we got to look at that. We have to. Um, but these capital things that have been accumulating over years, whether they're infrastructure, roads, police cars, dump trucks, fire trucks, they're, they're all things that you, you have to say they're necessities. A new ambulance that if the police car doesn't get out of the garage, we don't get to the emergency and somebody's going to get sued for that and we're going to be held accountable for that. Um, so there's certain equipment in this borough that Jeff needs, Jim needs, I need. We, it, we need it to operate, and I think we have to acknowledge that we need it to operate, or we're kidding ourselves if we don't address those. Um, and, and I see it, I've said it for 12 years now, but it's like recycling with our police cars. When they get so many miles on them, um, now they're a maintenance liability, and they're costing us more than what we would have. We said, wow, well, we can get through the next two years with none, and we'll just get more next year kicking the can down the road. S some of these things have to be replaced in a timely fashion. I, I know we all have fleets of equipment that is aging and we have the equipment that we use to do our jobs that we have done that. We so said, we'll just use it till it breaks. What happens when it breaks? What happens next year when the radio frequency goes down that we own, that we share with Lehigh County on the southern end, and we have to fix it, and it's not in the budget? Then it's an emergency situation and we have to do it. Now we have to fund the money. But if we keep doing this with the capital project side of it too, we're going to put ourselves in a deeper hole three and four and five years down the road. Um, I think it's not as difficult for us as a team to sit down and balance out the operational side of this budget. I've been in budgets that were in the worst condition than this more recently. I, you know, I wasn't overly... It's upsetting to know we, we may not have a cash carryover, but I, I was pleasantly surprised to know it wasn't 800000 like we had a few years ago. And then we're thinking about cutting not just one employee, but several. I, I think if we go to work as a group and, and we all cooperate, we can, get, we can balance that operational side of the budget. I think the long-term uh, message or, or the, the question we have to answer is, how are we going to fund Jeff's capital projects, Mike's, myself, Jim. What, what is our plan going to be? That's why I, I put in a five-year um, capital budget to say these things are on the radar screen. They're going to happen. Um, when they break, when the radio frequency goes down and you now have no mode of communication, what are you going to do? Um, when Jeff's trucks don't get out on the road, what is he going to do? He's going to come to me and say, i got to buy this tomorrow. So we need to plan out, I think, some of these capital things a couple of years out and understand that they're going to come back next year. And if we kick the can down the road this year and say no capital expenses are funded and you got some computers that break and they're in a police car and we're dispatched through that computer, what do we do now? What, what do we do? So I think we need to plan for that. And, and I'm, not as concerned about the operational side. I think we can meet this if the department heads can be involved in the decision of what are we doing now that is not a necessity. If anybody disagrees, department head wise, please. But. No, that's kind of what I was saying. I think it would be very interesting to, I think the, the 
way I see it is we, we need to be honest and be able to sit down and, and take away the political effect of discussing things, you know. Um, the library, the, just like the Postal Service, so many things have changed about that whole setting. Um, that in itself raises, for me personally, raises a question. Um, tremendous amount of expense. Um, my guys are down there every week, 20 to 30 light bulbs. Just that in itself. Again, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. I'm simply throwing things out. No, Jeff, I appreciate it. The, the, don't, don't the, think the, we're the, the landscape has changed in the world. Why do you think the post office has suffered so much? The internet has changed the world. Um, don't think we're going to walk out of here and say, hey, Jeff said this, Jeff said well, that. Well, I, I don't mean, want I don't anyone to take it that way. No, I'm right. just simply trying to have an open, honest discussion about yeah. you know, maybe some of my feelings, whether I'm right, wrong, or whatever. No, no, no. It's, it's what we need to hear. I mean, it um, needs to be... But I really do think that the, the way you've got to start is what council, what is the absolute basic services council wants to see? And then fund that and then say, okay, do we have enough money to, to, to operate the pool? Do we have enough money to fund the Main Street program? Do we have enough money to fund the concert series? Do we have enough money to run the pavilions? Um, do we have enough money to contribute to the EACs? And you guys decide amongst those items what, 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 what would it be? Um, if you keep pace with your fees, we, we should be able to manage some of those capital expenses, maybe not all, and we can, we can teeter with a three or four or five year range plan. And these are absolute priorities and that's what we get fine. But, you know, I, I think the operational side has to be that we try to maintain as many of the services we deliver as we can. I hope that's the goal. That's my appeal um, before we go to the throats of, of cut services, which means employees will go. The things that I'm fearful of, and this year, three of them happened to my department. No control. I can't control it. In January, we got a letter from DEP. We've got to start testing for SOCs, IOCs, and VOCs. We spent an extra $20,000 this year on testing that's totally unbudgeted. Had no, couldn't say I don't want to do it. No, we had to okay. Uh, street signs. Are you aware that all our street signs are wrong? Yeah. Sure. They now decided that uh, four inch letters aren't big enough. You got to go to six inch letters. So now all the street signs in town got to be changed. And probably what they'll do is tie those to some sort of a requirement that, you know, maybe your liquid fuels money's got to, you know, you won't get it unless you comply. We've well, already started buying them. Well, I think they're holding on but implementing now at this point. Okay. Uh, the handicap ramps, you talk about a ridiculous requirement. Okay. You see what they end up with. You look at the mess down here at 6th Street. All they are is a big place to puddle water, but they are expensive. They cost you five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 a quarter. Uh, you know, and so that's where the word mandate comes in. That's where you must comply with what the law is. Yep. You have to do it. There's a certain way you have to deliver a service because the law provides that. Our compo site is mandated. Act 101, we must run that compo site. We must have twice a week's recycling pickup. But guess what? Maybe we stop catering and say, and we put in the newsletter, we're picking up Christmas trees this week only, instead of my guys driving around for six weeks, like a bunch of idiots, picking up trees, or oh, picking up trees, picking up trees, and driving around until the cows come home. And that everybody stands by their guns and when the resident calls and complains that we're not made out to be jerks and say, no, it was in the newsletter, and that's what we're doing. You mentioned about twice a week recycling pickup. We get it once, once a week. No, I'm talking uh, uh, organic uh, yard waste. The, the narrow banding that has affected every department in this room occurs December 31st, 2012. Federal and state law says that we will all be in compliance with narrow banding in our community.
applications by that date. We don't have an option. Every radio, every repeater, every fire truck, ambulance, police car, and public works vehicle, and every substation and every building must be in compliance. What does that mean? The 30 and 40 year old ones that are down in this building that, that we own must be replaced. We don't have a choice. Yep, it's on my capital request form, but guess what? At some point, we have to do it. We have to do it, and it's the law. And if not, we're operating in violation of the law, and the, the trouble's just start there. Well, won't your radio not even work? No, no, your radio won't even work. No, we won't be dispatched over. And I think ours are, thankfully, we don't have what you have, but ours are already done. We're, we're fortunately staying ahead of the curve with ours because I knew this four years ago, and as we replaced them, we complied. I know you're doing that too, Jim. But there's still some existing infrastructure in this borough that is very aged, and I think we need to know that in a year from now, that needs addressed. Two years from now, this needs addressed. I think there's also some hidden fines if it's not done. Oh, he'll find you. Plus, oh. you figure out business. Um, well, that's our task every day. When, when this is dictated on the us, the next step is digital communication, which is about four to five years out. That's the next step. And that means that your police, fire, and ambulance, at a minimum, are going to have to have digital capability. And what does the 911 center say? We lost back in 1994. They're driving the bus. They dictate you will buy this equipment, this model, with this identifier, and this is how much it costs. You're talking the police lots, chief, lots, sorry, department lots. head, does not have a choice in that. To operate, that's the equipment we need. So those capital expenses are not going to go away. I think that's where the fees are going to have to come in. I'm, I'm not here to add a big no means. We've tried diligently the last couple of years to avoid that. But fees and what we're charging for the extra stuff we're doing, come on, people. Um, you know, we're, we got a guy downtown marking tires. Are we going to provide that and not provide the officer that's going to respond to the emergency? I'm not. But these are tough decisions now. What, can I ask a question? What, what happened with the parking meter years ago? They gave it up because why? Variety of reasons. They were taken out because it, it was, it, it, they wanted to go to um, the signage that they got. It, it, they needed to be maintained. They needed to all be replaced. They were aging. Somebody had, the police department a weekly went down to collect all the change out of it, had to count it, take it to the bank. It was all, it was all extra work that you did to support what? Parking. Um, what we're doing now, we have somebody assigned to manage that. Um, it's all extra work that fell upon the employees of the borough. Whether you collect money out of a parking meter or enforce a two-hour sign, it's still manpower that you're providing the service to do. Um, downtown, one of the meters out of there, that was one of their premises. No, it's because that obviously is a big revenue generator for the larger communities, and I think that's really that's that's the key to this whole thing. You know, it is either raise taxes or generate more revenue. Generate revenue somewhere. Don't yeah. kid yourself that you're going to cut cut people because. In order to make a community, you must do things that have kind of become culturally accepted to do. And I don't know where the answer lies, and I don't have a good answer. I don't have an answer, but I just, it's a big circle. Right, absolutely. It's a big circle. We raise our rates to what we charge, say, the school district. Mm -hmm. They end up, rate, they have to pay us more, so they raise, you know, they raise their tax cut. I mean, and, you know, it's, it just, it doesn't stop. It just goes around. And I think what a lot of people don't realize, too, is Jeff and I, we were debating this the other day, and I wasn't debating them, I was agreeing with them, but the fact of the matter is, what do you do when a police officer goes to court You replace the officer? He can't work without the officer. He's not there. He can't show up. So you don't have a choice. The officer's got to go to court. 
and yep, you're paying him to go to court because he's got to be there. It's a mandate. And now, what happens? So Jeff and I were debating, well, there's a cost for that, isn't there? Today? Well, absolutely. Because now somebody else replaces that somebody else. We're 24 7 service, 365 days a year, answering 8 to 10,000 calls a year. That's not going to go down much, I don't suspect. You know, incrementally, year by year, I think all of our call volumes have, have gone up, not down. So the demand for services is higher. There is no question for that. Then it becomes, all right, this is what we must do. This is what we are doing that we may not have to do. Appreciate all your input. Amelia, you think there's anything else we need? I would like to send them away with their copy of the fee schedule and see if they can get it back to you, if there's recommendations about things that are more... Mark it up. That are more, re more reasonable. They both have AC. Okay. I definitely think this needs to be looked at, but guess what? Drop in the bucket. Not going to buy you, don't try to. No, I think you're right. I mean, I don't think, I'm going through this, I don't know what we're going to get out of it. A few thousand are we going to get out of the change in fees? Did you I, talk about that before I got here? Did you discuss the fees? Not in particular. Okay. No, no. no. and I think what Brian's asking okay. is that everybody takes okay. the opportunity to get Just take an opportunity to look through and see what affects your department, and if it's if we're I mean there may be things that are way out of line on here because we I don't know that I've ever asked department heads to look at this since I've been chair of budget and finance we just sat here and said well this one I know Jim Farnsworth did it for us but then we said ah this one looks slow let's bump this one and I don't know how reasonable we are I mean I don't know how reasonable we are on pool pavilion maybe you have a better idea maybe you that's the thing though see you've got to be careful because you shoot yourself in the foot. Well, right. if, if you want that facility open, you got to be careful where you place, just like Mike said. You, you increase it five bucks, what's the chance of losing that 35 if the people won't come? I agree. I mean, if you double, if you increase pavilion rates, how, what, what's the threshold where people say, well, I'm not paying that, I'm not renting it, and then you lose the whole rental fee for the increase. But maybe you guys, look. if you take time to look at this and get back to Craig, maybe you have better ideas than we do. You're, you're better informed than we are about these things. If you look at the total budget, if you look at the total budget, the last, the last couple of years there's been a lot of discussion over individual line items. And in the end, it was seven eight thousand dollars savings. And in the overall picture of the seven million dollar budget, it's a it's it's the, yeah you know it really is. You look at you know cutting back, but again, if you look at the budgets and you look at the projections and where we're at, I think we're all pretty much right on the line. Expenses versus, you know, my revenues are up, my expenses are worth at 75%. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I, the, for, for me personally, the only thing I would ask is that we keep everybody in the loop, not because I'm, I feel like I need to be in the loop personally. I just want to make sure everybody's informed. I want to make sure everybody's working as a team. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this, and I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but Brian, you've been here your whole life, okay? You served a long time on council. You served a long time on council. You all have. But guess what? You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue what we go through daily. Craig, I think, is now on a different side of the fishbowl. And until you, it's a, just kind of a, the weirdest thing to go down and actually be a part of the day-to-day -day thing, and it's like a kind of a wow thing that you can't imagine what we're trying to say until you actually are immersed in it. And so it's really important that... I think that's why these meetings are so important, and that's why I appreciate so much that you guys take the time to come here, because I think we need the input from you. I can gladly go through the budget and cut the money needed. I mean, it's easy. I can cut numbers. Anybody can do that. But it's not going to do me any good, and it's going to, it's not going to work. It's going to backfire if I do it that way. It's not going to affect us, it's going to affect you. I want to do whatever's the best for the people in the community. That, that's, uh, that's in my heart, and I think that's in the rest of the department heads' heart. No question. It's not a job, it's an adventure. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do. It's not my job to make political decisions, um, but I think that what what are the expectations of the people in the community? Why do they live here? Why do they own businesses here? 
because of the quality mm -hmm. of life, whether it be quality of life for your family, quality of life for your students, for you live, quality of your work life. They're here, and Mass is the most desirable community in the league of life. And why is it that way? It's that way because you have department heads who are in front of you who we go over and above what most communities do for people. But the fact is, is that's what the people of this community expect. Do they expect to have the Walmart of communities? No. Do they expect to have a Risk Carlton of a community? No. But they expect what they've been getting as services. And what, how much does it cost to, to fund those services? Well, it costs a lot of money. But the fact is, is that I really believe that when you walk out in the community, and Nate brought this up at the one meeting, um, and that is, when I talk to people, you know, they don't complain about their borough rates, whether it be a tax rate, a water rate, their fees downstairs. They don't complain about it. The reason being is they say, you know what, Greg, I know I get value for the dollars that I and it's like it's like the people the people go to Disney World. I mean, it's exorbitantly expensive, but people go because they think they're getting a value for what they're paying. Um, it's not exorbitantly expensive here, but they know they're getting something. Um, in a way, if it wasn't for the school tax being what it is, I don't think you'd ever hear anybody complain about the burden of that. The fact is, is that you have that tax, which means about four times as much. And that is a real burden for so many people. Um, but the fact is they get a lot for what they pay here in May. Now, if, if you want to start saying, you know what, we're not going to fund the departments to provide the services that we have before. Um, that, that truly is what I think the political slash philosophical decision that's going to be in, in front of council, not just for this budget, but for ensuing years. And that is, are we, gonna, are we as a community going to be providing less? And that's a legitimate policy to have. But that's the decision that Borough Council has to make. Are we going to provide what we've provided in the past, or are we going to provide less with less money? And that, like I said, if that's what Council chooses to do, that's fine. It's a totally acceptable philosophy. I don't think that's what the people who own property from them, 
you will hear from them if you don't provide some of those necessities. I guarantee you, we are going to hear the fire truck's late, the police officers, what do we hear from the surrounding jurisdictions? Took that guy an hour to get here, and they're angry about it. That one will be right. And the, they're, they're justifiable. The question is, if we take away some of those extra services, we're going to hear from them, too. You will. And that's what, that's, they'll come and complain if we take away anything, anything that they lose. You will. If we, if we charge more or take anything away, we're going to hear from them. But So the goal then becomes, it should be priorities. As a, as a collective group, that we've got to prioritize what that is. Individually as departments and then collectively as council. If you, if you take the, 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 the borough is rated and fire rated because of the fire department and what happens, you eliminate services, those insurance rates go yeah, so I get, get, that's what I'm bring up. Where I mean, I, I share our ASO ratings that we, we're actually, there's only three fire companies in the state of Pennsylvania that are above us. And if we lose that rating, in fact, next year, ISO is coming back and you come back every 11 years. We're expecting you to come back next year. If we lose that rating, people's fire insurance is going to go from 600 are going to go up 700. So that's 300. You know, so you get all the So you pay me now or you pay me later. No police when walk around with six shooters on there. Well, you have very small communities <coughs> in, in Pennsylvania that closed their doors and said, we got four police officers, we're going to call the state police, put the phone off the hook. That's always an option. But here's what a lot of people don't recognize. You also pay a fee per diem to the Commonwealth now. If the state police are going to police your jurisdiction. You pay for that service too. So one way or the other, I'm here to tell you, you're going to pay for public safety. You're going to pay for it. Whether you're paying us or someone else, somebody's going to open the roads, the fire truck's got to come, the ambulance's got to go, and the police officer's going to come. Trooper, municipal officer, or who, but you're going to pay a fee to somebody to provide that service. And if you look at the pie charts in large cities, small jurisdictions, and ours, you're going to see that public safety, yep, yeah, it's a large chunk of the pie, and then public works. You're going to see that, I don't think we're that much different than other municipalities. It's, it's, the revenue thing that that we got to look at and the fees. I, I would the only only other thing I want to say is this memorandum is exactly the mentality that we're fighting <coughs> to throw a dart at the wall without understanding the needs and come up with an arbitrary percentage that you're just going to reduce stuff mm -hmm. is the problem. The understanding isn't there to arrive at something that is good. That is the explanation point behind the sentence of what my thought has been all along. You won't feel bad, Jeff. I got 76,000 more. <laughs> well, I'm not, not saying we shouldn't <laughs> cut 46,000 or 76 or whatever. I'm saying that approach is so arbitrary, we might as well roll dice. You have the insurance figures. I'll have insurance figures, and then we're two weeks away from which will get us a better idea of cash carryover and any other expenses. There's really nothing else I can do except to ask you for your feedback right now and let you know that we want you in the process if it comes to the point where we have to make cuts. Or if we, it comes to the point of whatever we have to do, we just want you to know where, where we stand right now and what the process is. I appreciate your time. I appreciate that you took the time to sit here. Um, I want to call for personal appeals real quick. And we'll wrap it up. Personal appeals. Yeah, I just I took notes here, and I just want to throw my two cents in because that's why I wanted to listen to you, everybody here. Um, first of all, some of you guys made suggestions for fee increases or suggestions for raising revenue. Um, Jeff, you said about eliminating the four hours on Wednesdays. I support that, and that saves. You said an estimated six thousand dollars. You said about paying somebody straight shift time on a Saturday, that would save four to $5,000. I think that's a great idea. It's just readjusting hours. You said, well, what happens if that person calls off sick? Well, that, you have that same situation now. So somebody's scheduled to work there. If they call off sick, you have to scramble to replace them. So I don't think that's any different. No, that's not, that, that's not, 
Well, I, I, if that's not true, then fine. Okay. But I'm just saying, if you're able to do it, it would save that four to five thousand um, dollars. I think your idea of uh, increasing the ambulance re fees, I don't, I don't know, you have to go back and say, you know, it hasn't been increased in 10 years or whatever. I, I think most people would understand that. Or I also like your idea of maybe having a family structure and a, an a adult, you know, like a two or, or one family uh, fee, you know, multiple family members versus two or less. Uh, that may not be a bad idea either. Um, Jeff, you also, when I was talking to you, you said, like when you put roadblocks up at block parties, somebody from the uh, public park has to take the time and go set those roadblocks up and then they have to go retrieve them. Um, I think maybe we should charge a fee for that. I don't care if it's 10, 20 dollars. People have to understand that these things aren't free anymore. Um, you had mentioned about del del delivering picnic tables. That, I'm sure, takes a lot more time than just doing a barricade. There should be a fee for that. Uh, maybe you base it on man hours. Uh, that, that probably would be the best way of doing it. Um, you said about $75 for hanging up a banner and taking a banner down. You said that doesn't even come close to covering your hours. So I think you should increase that. We need to cover our costs. Um, you said about increasing the red tag. You're going to do that, and I, I think that's appropriate. Um, the summer concert series. I think that we should have whatever we, whatever funds that are raised privately, if that's enough for five or six concerts, then maybe we have them every other week through the summer, and that's paid privately, and it doesn't cost the borough anything. But we can't afford to be paying $8,000 for that. Um, I, I haven't heard anyone bring this up, but what is it, two years since we did the bonds? Is it two? Year and a half. Year and a half? There's a, there's municipalities that are refinancing and saving quite a bit of money. And I would like to see us look at that because the long-term rates have come down even further, I believe. Now, I might be wrong on that, but I think they have. Um, so I would like to look at that because what is our principal and interest on the money we borrowed that won't be paid off to 2021? I believe we paid, what, $538,000 a year for principal and interest for money we borrowed. That's our capital improvements right there per year. Is that about right? There's about 500, the tribute to the bond issue is $513,000. Okay, so I was in the ballpark. Half a million dollars. If we didn't have money borrowed, now I know I'm saying if, but we need to have the long-term goal of getting out of a debt and freeing up that money. And that's a lot of that's what eight years, nine years, <coughs> nine years. I was just put a plan to bring. I look back. Um, what most people don't realize is that the percentage that we pay in our general fund towards debt service, that percentage is less today than it was to virtually every year in the 1990s. No, I totally understand that, the, 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 and the, that the, helped the, us too. The debt, the, the debt, the debt level that we have is less now than it was throughout the 90s. But my whole point is, let's get to the point where we don't borrow money and take that $500,000 and be preventive and start budgeting, say, okay, we're going to put money away for a fire truck. We're going to put money away for ambulances and police cruisers. Knowing, the, like, for instance, Chief Faust set a five-year schedule. Let's start planning doing that, but we've got to get to a point where we're not in debt. So, I mean, it's for, for the future. Um, also, wages and health care are a lot of our costs, and we will hopefully be able to address that in 2013. It doesn't help us for this year, but hopefully, I think everyone knows it's coming, contribute towards health insurance, and uh, new employees are going to, you know, not get the same benefits that current employees have. We already started that with the secretary's union. Um, I also had mentioned earlier in the, in the public works, how much is left in the bond money that we borrowed that's still um, available that if we have emergencies or a piece of equipment that we have to definitely do, that at least we have that in the bond money that's available yet. And I don't know if that, it might, would it be off if I said there's maybe 100,000 left? I, I wouldn't want to venture a yes. <laughs> okay, well I would say, I would so feel safe it, saying there's. That you won't be able to tell. I won't be able to tell them. Have to do some research in there. What does that mean? 
specifically assigned. If you didn't specifically assign, then you would have to take official action on the allocation change. Just like the grant. Please so modify the grant. Right. Right. And th that's pretty much it. I, I just wanted to cite that we do need to increase revenue. We have this. We can't just keep doing all these things for free anymore because we're struggling. Um, and maybe you don't know this, but we're the second highest ta tax rate already in all of Lehigh County. The only one higher than us is Coopersburg because they had a disaster with their water or sewer, one or the other, and their taxes are at 17 mills and we're at 14, and everyone else is. Pretty far below us. Thirteen. 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 I'm sorry. Thirteen. And uh, anyhow, and one more comment, Jeff. You said about taxes. It's about two dollars a month, but you have to add in your garbage fees of three hundred dollars. You have to add in your sewer and water bill. So it's not just. If there are other services you are paying for that. If you accumulatively okay. added it up, it'd be probably a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars somewhere in there. But, but I'm saying the taxes for the property that you own. You're paying for your garbage because you've got garbage to haul off. Right. You're paying for your sewage because you're flushing the toilet. You're paying for the water because you're drinking it. Right. But the $2 a day you're paying is just to live in the community. Yeah. And that's I'm just making a good point. The it, roads, the, you know, all yeah, the Yeah, but the, the water and sewer your <laughs> services too. Right. right. Okay. That's all. Thank you very much. And uh, I know you guys, you're already, I mean, I know from last year's budget that you guys are already pinched. Yeah, we're there. Yes. We know pretty much as far as we We know. Everybody on council knows that. You know what really bothers me more than anything else? Is the public perception. They don't have a clue how much we care. That's they, they, you know, know, they, 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 they don't have a clue. I really think that. You know, they, they look at us like we're a bunch of high paid, you know, greedy people that, you know, I eat and live, breathe this job. Uh, you know, I get calls two, three o'clock in the morning on a regular basis. I've spent many nights at the back of the grocery store on the phone, you know, working out problems. You know, I, I start at six in the morning and go home at four, and I don't take lunch. You know, I eat on the run if I eat at all, and you know, everybody else does the same thing. It just it really bothers me that people look at us and they act like we we got the gold bag here. You know, maybe some, Jeff. I think there's a large percentage of this community that's very thankful. I mean, we hear that feedback. I hear it all the time. The example is yesterday we were scrambling to get a bunch of guys to court, so we called a local place, ordered a bunch of sandwiches, here you go. And it just turned out that I had like 15 minutes free, so I went to pick them up. Some guy some guy comes up to me, and I, and I thought it was going to be about a complaint. He pulled me aside. He says, hey, I want to talk. He didn't even know who it was. I, I want to tell you, I just want to thank you guys for what you do. Your response time is amazing. I've called you guys out three times in the last three months. I just moved here from New Jersey. He said, you people are incredible. I just, just just send a message. And then he looked at my name tag, and he's like, you're the chief? I said, yeah, I'm picking up lunch real quick. we gotta, we got to go. And uh, he's like, it's unbelievable. And I think, you know, when our guys go to a house and there's, you know, somebody stricken or something or there's a crime and they get that kind of service. There, there is a lot of thankful people. Well, we see on the ambulance side, the fire side. Honestly, there are a lot of people in this community that are. But Craig says, you know what, you guys are really doing a good job. And that that helps, it makes it easier to come. Your, your departments are more public in that way, they I are. think, than, than yours because of the services you provide. You I provide get, it in an emergency, you provide an assessment. I get two thank you cards a week, and I, and I put them right in the personnel files of the officers who were on the call, and I always give them copies. But we get a lot of that thankfulness. I think maybe probably you're taking more for granted because people expect their streets and stuff to be loud. But really, a lot of people in this borough are thankful for what we do. I, I think they are. All right, gentlemen. Take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining, guys. I really appreciate it. We'll be in touch. Billy. Sorry, ex president. Tomorrow, 8 30. 8.30, 8.05, 8.35. I'll see what he said. What he said. Oh, you're the chief.